Let me just say a couple of things on my own part. Uh, this is the second such Juba calling event. When we last had this conversation in June last year, we were looking forward to the birth of a new country. And that has now happened, as we all know. And it is worth asking whether the issues we worried about then are still a cause for concern. Nine months ago, we worried whether the South Sudanese would build a country which is democratic and stable, where the government provides basic services to the people and is accountable to them, where people can feel safe and in their homes, receive a good education and build prosperous lives for themselves and their families, where corruption is tackled everywhere it occurs, where human rights are respected and there is freedom of speech and the press, where political groupings could flourish, including by separation from the SPLM, where there is genuine <laughs> civilian control over the military and police standards are raised. We also hoped that South Sudan could behave like a responsible international actor, most especially in its relations with the Republic of Sudan to the north. Uh, those of you who have been following the issues will know that the concerns remain about many of these issues. And I assume that in the question and answer session after this, uh, they may well be raised. Of course, we can't discuss the issues, sorry, ignore the issues of the moment, such as the oil shutdown and the need for austerity measures. The tensions on the border, uh, of which there are many, including armed conflict, and refugees as well as internally displaced and their great needs. There is insecurity in a number of states, not just Jonglei, but most spectacularly and famously in Jonglei, as we have heard. On the negotiations in general, which have been happening in Addis, we've been focused on oil for a long time, but as we have seen in the agreements signed yesterday, and as <laughs> Dr. Luca has just described, we should all bear in mind that the final deal will be a package. Both parties, the government of the Republic of Sudan and the government of the Republic of South Sudan, agreed to negotiate on the basis that nothing was agreed until everything was agreed. So there is unlikely to be a final deal on oil without forward movement on the other issues. We can hope that the agreements which were initialed yesterday and the summit which is to happen in the very near future will mark genuine forward movement. Now, I've thrown out some more issues there because I know that you are all focused on the oil and austerity and on the fighting in Jongle, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't focus on those and only those because the nature of South Sudan's challenges are much more wide ranging. The nature of cattle rustling uh, isn't endemic only to John Glade. The nature of insecurity across South Sudan affects so many communities. And of course, the austerity measures are merely the latest indication that South Sudan's economic challenges, when its budget was based on one resource, was always going to come under pressure at some stage. And without finding other means of generating revenue, in South Sudan and relying so much on an exhaustible source of revenue, they, they were going to have to face challenges at some stage. Uh, we have a splendid cast here and I've no doubt that you have questions for them. Uh, they are far more expert than I am in all of these issues. So shall we open up to you now or would you like to take questions or pick up on points they've already raised. I think we'll come back to uh, those points in, in just a moment.